everyone that says rain a career with purpose and passion. I'm so excited because you know, today was an interesting day for me. Somebody couldn't show up uh, today for our studio session, but life has to go on, right? So I got an opportunity, thanks to Anel Para, and she said, I have somebody that will be very great for your show. And so today I wanted to introduce Rudy J. Rubio, the owner of Latinx Network Group. And I'm just really excited because we were talking over the phone and I had the opportunity to kind of like, you know, vibe with him real quick before today's session. Hey, so I want to introduce Rudy. <laughs> Hi guys, good afternoon. Rudy J. Rubio, owner of Latinx Network. So excited to have you. So let's talk about, you know, where your family is from and where did you grow up? Families from, both parents are from a little town in Jalisco uh, called Sacualco de Torres. Mm -hmm. uh, they're known for their unique leather furniture. They are the, they are the hometown of, what are they called? Uh, Equipales. That's the name of uh, uh, that particular furniture. You'll see it at very high-end restaurants. I think Javier's has them. Ah, so, yes. Yeah, they, that's where my parents are. That's where they're from. So uh, they both met as teens. And mm -hmm. then, you know, they met, got married. Uh, they had us, me and my sister. So it's uh, two siblings from uh, our parents. And, yeah, they're both from Jalisco. Then they mm -hmm. uh, immigrated here. I think my dad immigrated here in the 70s. Mm -hmm. and then my mom followed but um before that before that uh on both spectrums both sides uh mom's side and that side our grandparents were braceros so they were here for the bracero program ah, explain in, that explain that because some people might not know what that is so the bracero program was a program where Mexican workers came here legally mm. to work the farms. So they would, I, I don't know how the connection, how it happened, but you were given a number, I guess a social or some kind of number, mm -hmm. and you, you came here legally. So I, I didn't know that till recent that both of my grandparents, they were here. They were both here working. Wow. Um, so they, yeah. And I remember, uh, both of them, both of my grandparents passed away, but I remember my dad's, dad's dad would talk about Orange County and talk about Anaheim. I guess that's oh. where he worked and he remembers the orange fields. So, so yeah, wow. that's, okay. uh, a little, uh, a little history, a little family history. Yeah. So they both came, both of them came, uh, they were part of the Bracero program. So they came here temporarily to come work, uh, I guess, orange fields, grape fields, or et cetera. Yes. Uh, yeah, and then they'll go back. So it was like temporary work, temporary uh, legal work. And, so yeah. when, when did you, uh, were you born in Mexico too? No, I was born and raised here in L.A. Okay, so what part of L.A. did you grow up in? I grew up in the city of Huntington Park. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so Huntington Park, not that many people know it, but it's 10 minutes southeast from downtown LA. Yes, so by Southgate, right? Southgate, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Southgate, um, Maywood, Huntington Park, Bell, those are my neighboring cities. Okay. Yeah, born and raised here in Huntington Park. Awesome. So mm -hmm. um, when you went to high school, what was your vision? You know, obviously your family, you know, most of our ancestors or parents, they come to California to give us a better life. So when you were in high school, what was your ideal goal or dream career? 
not this. I can tell you that. As a, <laughs> as a young as a young teen, I was very in love with music. So I was a musician. I wanted to play sports, and that's what at the time fueled my passion was music, sports, and and that's what that's what I had in me. I what I'm currently doing now it's it's been uh it's been a process and i i i feel like i grew into this this new person who i am yes yeah okay but yeah as a young as a young man i, I didn't i didn't know i didn't know if if i wanted to be yeah a, a police officer or I wanted to go into law or teaching or et cetera. I, I, I didn't know. I really didn't know. Um, I was going to school and yeah, just sports and music were my passion at the time. But as far as career wise, I didn't have uh, like a direction or a thought of this is what I want to be. You know, yes. I want to be, um, et cetera. No, I didn't. Did you graduate from, um, Huntington park high school? Uh, Bell. 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 Okay. Okay. So, right. yeah. So yeah, my little, my little area where I grew up, um, uh, we were divided and I had to go to Bell high school. Okay. Understood. Yeah. So then when did, um, when did the journey come about uh, Latinx Network Group? Like, how did that come about? This this just happened recently. This is brand new. This is probably four years young. Mm -hmm. um, a situation happened where I lost my job. Okay. I lost my job um, making, you know, really good money. But I was, I was in my my well, how I felt I was trapped I had no time they owned my time so yes. whenever I wanted yeah whenever I, I wanted to go somewhere if I wanted to go see my family I couldn't because I had to work if I wanted to spend Thanksgiving there was no Thanksgiving dinner for me because I had to work if I had to if somebody if uh, a family member was getting baptized I couldn't work I couldn't go because I had yes. to work Mm -hmm. So what was so your, work, what was your career at the time? You know, be, you know, I, the, the job you had. I was in the bar and restaurant industry. Ah, so, now that makes sense. Yeah. So you're in that industry. You're, 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 you're a slave. You're in there working minimum yes. 60 hours plus. Wow. And when you're, you're upper level management, so physically, you're there working 60 hours plus, mm -hmm. but you're always on call. You're always on the phone. There's always problems. So it, yeah, it, it consumes you. Did but, you lose um, your job through, because of COVID? No, no, no. This was four years ago. No, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This was four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, it's, it's interesting how a bad situation mm -hmm. right opens up a whole nother there's a whole nother <laughs> opportunity yeah and that's that's exactly what happened lost my job i lost my job at the end of november I, uh 2000 was it 2018 was it 18 or 17 i think 18 no 17 17 <laughs> And I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was lost, torn. I didn't want to go back to that industry. Mm -hmm. um, I knew what I wanted. I wanted to be the owner of my time. That's the number one thing that I wanted to do. And um, I, I had that in my heart. So that... As soon as that happened, as soon as I got late, you know, I got fired. I knew that I didn't want to go back to that. Yes, I didn't want course. to go back to that. But um, a situation happened where a friend at the time, uh, we went hiking. 
He's big on fitness. Um, I love to be active. I, I try to go to the gym. I love hiking, love the outdoors. Um, he invited, no, he invited me to go running, but I'm not a runner. Mm -hmm. I told him, hey, let's go hiking. Let's go to my hiking trail. So we went hiking, had an amazing time. And at the end of the hike, he, 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 he asked me a extremely random question. He goes, hey, bro, what are you doing uh, December? What did he say? I don't remember the dates. So I was like, what are you doing December 18th through the 20-something? I'm like, what? I go, I don't know. <laughs> That's like so specific. He goes, yeah, what are you doing? I go, I don't know, bro. I'm like, I just got fired. I, go, I have no idea. He goes, and then he looked at me seriously. He goes, hey, bro. He goes, you want to go to China? I go, what? Wow. He goes, yeah, you want to go to China? Yeah, he goes, you want to go to China? I go, what do, you, what do you mean you want to go to China? I go, bro, normally people are like, hey, bro, do you want to go have barbecue, you know, on Saturday or go, go to the bar? bar go to the <laughs> yeah, go to the bar, go yes. grab a drink, let's go get some ramen. What do you mean go to China? He goes, yeah. And then he explained, uh, he got booked. Uh, he's a DJ, very famous DJ. He goes, hey, I got booked in China and I'm going to be out there for 18 days. Wow. He goes, you want to go? He goes, you want to go? I go, are you serious? He goes, yeah, bro, I'm serious. And then, then I, you know, then I saw his, he go, oh shit, he is serious. Mm -hmm. he, he's serious. So I took the invitation and honestly, that, that trip changed, changed me, changed everything. I can imagine. Um, beautiful trip. Um, we were in Beijing, China, uh, 18 days. Uh, the ending of December, so it was extremely cold. Um, I think it was like minus five degrees, ten de like uh, uh, the afternoon was ten degrees. <laughs> At night, it would drop down to minus five, and so oh on. Oh my god! So, so I'm in China, eighteen days. A unfortunate situation happened where we lost our we had a concierge appointed to us mm -hmm. while, while we were in china somebody that was helping us out he would help us with translation transportation whatever we needed right because we i don't speak chinese yes um so something happened with that individual where he was no longer accessible that that uh that gentleman from china so we were somewhat not stuck or stranded, but we were not in a good, not in a good place because we didn't know how to navigate. Um, we don't know how to navigate in China. So when that situation happened, we were stuck in our room for two days, two days, because we didn't know how to, we didn't know how to get a taxi. Uh, we didn't know how to get a taxi. We didn't know how to order food at a restaurant. We could point at the menu, but yes, we, we, we just didn't know how to navigate. Um, then I had like this aha moment where I'm like, dude, um, well, hold on. Let me backtrack. One thing I don't know if you guys know, but in China, there's no internet. There's no U S internet. Oh, wow. So you can't, so that's what made it difficult. Like you can't just, Hey Google, Hey Siri, you know, translate. No, there's no internet. So you can't, you know, as for Uber, Uber or can't. anything, yes. Nope. Wow. None of that. Because they block they block everything off. So that's what made it even more challenging. So we're stuck in a room two days, like, yo, what are we gonna do? This guy's not answering. And then that's when I had the aha moment, like, dude, hold on. I remember my good friend Jessica. She was in China last year. Let me see if she could help us out. So what's up work? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. WhatsApp was, you know, we were awesome. able to use WhatsApp. Yes. So I send her a message. I go, Hey, Jessica, I'm in Beijing. And I didn't, I didn't ask for help. I just said, Hey, I'm near. I don't know where to eat. Any suggestions? That's all I asked. She goes, Dude, don't worry. I got you. My best friend lives in Beijing. Let me connect wow. you. And then, boom, that was a connection. But she yes. didn't know that. 
we were kind of in a bad place. Yes. And yeah, and uh, via WhatsApp, I connected from Beijing. And Jessica's Argentinian normally lives in LA, but she goes back and forth to Argentina. Mm -hmm. So I'm in Beijing via WhatsApp. I assume she was in LA. She wasn't in LA. Uh, she was in Argentina and, you know, connecting me with a friend in uh, Beijing. And thanks to my friend Jessica and Judith that lived in Beijing, we were able to navigate China, the our awesome. rest of our stay. Saw the Great Wall of China, Forbidden City, ate Peking Duck. Wow. I learned I learned the Beijing subway system. I learned how to uh, get a taxi and on and on and on. But the travel, the sightseeing, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But the super duper aha moment, the super like the one that, that I grabbed from China, I brought it back home yes. is the power of connection and network powerful i love to hear this please educate us so, on that so the power the power of network and connection took me to china mm -hmm. and the power of connection helped me navigate through china and helped me get out of china wow so, so that's how that's, latinx network group manifested Boom. yes yes and i came back excited i go I, I need to duplicate this with everybody. Everybody. Yes. Like, this is just, this is just me. I go, I need to share this with my community. Mm -hmm. And this is how we're going to uplift each other. There's things that I know that you don't know that can help you and vice versa. Yes. Stop holding information. Stop, you know, uh, just not allowing our community to grow. Yes. So, that that's that's where that's where that that's where it started so now what are you doing for the latino community with your with your business and explain to the viewers a, a little bit of you know the connections because that's what i called you a connector you know and it's always important to have a connector in your circle you know i'm i'm a big big connector um my nickname i'm the business matchmaker that's what i do so I'll connect. I, I'll give you an example of a phone call that I received earlier today. Mm -hmm. One of my good friends like, hey, bro, I need your help. I know that you know people. My wife needs to buy this new vehicle. But there's, you know, right now there's limited inventory on vehicles. Yes. But he goes, I know that you know a lot of people. I'm like, yes, I do. Let me see if I can help you. So by the way, my Rolodex is my head. I just remember people what they do and so on so then by the way i call you know example john my friend john he's a he's an auto broker mm -hmm. so, hey john good morning i need your help friends looking for this kind of vehicle this is the price range da, 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 da. can you help and then boom we made a connection so that's what i do but when i put events together it's that plus whatever people that are attending so awesome. normal attendance before COVID, I would average 250 to 300 attendees and growing and then COVID happened. Yes. Yeah. So are you still doing events during COVID? Because a lot of people are so over the situation, no. you know. Unfortunately, during COVID, I had to pause. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people were still, you know, skeptical with going out, meeting in person, and so on. I had one recent. I had one recently, last year, but it was small. It wasn't at the same magnitude as the ones that that I used to host. Yes. But I still got one out. It was a really, really good uh, uh, networking event. Great topic uh, that we, we, you know, that that we were talking about. Um, but yeah, I did. I did one. One small one. And I'm actually preparing now for my next one, which is going to be huge, March 24th. Awesome. So what are you doing March 21st? 24th. So March 24th. 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 So March 24th, um, including myself, my circle of friends, my network, we're big givers. 
-hmm. big, big, big givers and giving in different ways, like nonprofit, uh, with advice, with just work givers. Yeah. So I'm going to showcase a panel of my, you know, my circle, people that are doing philanthropy work in the, in the, uh, in our community. That's so. beautiful because I have a nonprofit called the Phoenix Rising Coalition in Inglewood. And mm -hmm. because of that nonprofit, I was able to go back to my high school and do a teacher appreciation day, you know, and then I was able to go back to my elementary school, Worthington Elementary in Inglewood and do a backpack and school supplies giveaway, a turkey drive, right? For the, for the families in the communities. And the last one obviously was December for the toy giveaway. So that's really important to share that information on the individuals that are really giving back to the community. Because yeah. when you don't have a million dollar nonprofit, which I don't yet, but I will, but at this time, I, I, I do not have a, you know, a million dollar nonprofit, right? We're not right. funded. So resources is what I need for my community. And so it's really good to just know that you're doing that panel of people giving back to their community. Right. Because I want to have the conversation. There's, there's topics that I want to touch with the different people. One, you have your nonprofit. Yes. You need resources. You need yes. volunteers. Yes. And you need a platform where you, you know, you could share your story and what you're doing. Yes. And see who aligns with you so they That's could right. help you. So they could help you. You could help, you know, your community. Yes. Right? So... That's a conversation that I want to have with my audience. Yes. That's number one. Number two, what, what made you start this, right? Yes, of course. What, what's, the, what's the purpose? Why? Why mm -hmm. does this, you know, uh, call you? Because there's different people that have different nonprofits. Um, I have a friend. She's in Fresno. Yes. And what she does, she gives back to the farm workers. Because that's what yes, caused her. Because she was, her, her parents were both farm workers and she grew up in the, in that industry, in the farming industry. Mm -hmm. So she sees um, the things that farm workers need. Uh, for example, uh, financial literacy. Like even the smallest thing, like open up a bank account. How yes. to use your ATM. Just stuff like that. How to... Uh, how to, uh, you know, read a, uh, a simple contract, like a, just a simple rental, uh, a rental contract, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, basic life skills, <laughs> basic life skills, yeah. right? But they don't, but they don't, they don't have, they don't yes. because that's, they didn't go to school. They didn't go to school, Yes. but, um, but she's a big advocate up there. That's beautiful. So that's her. And then I have other friends that, uh, concentrate in their, the, you know, their cities and mm -hmm. their communities. And then they, and then I have another friend, which I just recently had brunch with. She's giving back to all the street vendors right now. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, some controversy with the street vendors. So she's been helping out different street vendors. So yeah, that's, amazing. Um, but that's, that's the conversation I want to have. And then this is the, What's that, that saying? The elephant in the room uh, topic. Oh, yes. The backlash, the backlash that the nonprofit, the giver, mm -hmm. they, get, they get backlash. They get backlash uh, from other people saying, well, why are you documenting this? Why are you doing this? If you're a giver, you should just give. And, well, no, because I need a document. I need to do this. Yes, so for funding and other things. Yeah, people Correct. think it's always about showing off. Um, no, especially if you have an organization. Now, for me, the only reason why I say that is because working in the nonprofit sector since 1999 for myself and as right. an at-risk youth being a part of a nonprofit organization when I was in high school through gang intervention and prevention and reentry stuff, they would take pictures of us at the field trip. 
because they needed to document it for for writing grants, you know, or when people funds and write you a check for five thousand dollars, people want to see their money. You know, uh, they can't attend these events, but they want to see their money working and it's showing proof. You know, it's not all about, um, oh, look at me. I'm you know, I'm feeding the homeless. Look at me. No. Some people no. do have those agendas, obviously, but I mean, when you come to working in your community with the passion and purpose of starting a nonprofit and just giving back, it's bigger than that, you know, for the backlash. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, but it's deep. So now that you have this um, uh, Latin X network group, what other businesses do you have? So that, that one right there, the networking group, that's like, I don't know. That's my passion. That's my everything yes. right there. Uh, building the community, connecting people. That's, that's what drives me. That's uh, right. It really, really does. I, um, I just had actually this morning, I woke up, I wake up early. I wake up at 4 45 AM and I wake up extremely happy extremely grateful that's a blessing and yeah blessing i'm healthy family's good and i always uh give gratitude right uh just yes but uh, the little things that i have and this morning i had like this moment like this is real what you created it's real it's here and it's growing and that that's ad right. just made me made me extremely happy. But yeah, so I that's this is my passion and my other business. I own a handcrafted popsicle company. Mm, more details, please. I like popsicles. <laughs> so let me show you. That's the little that's the little logo. Okay. So yeah, I do handcrafted popsicles. Fun flavors: matcha green tea, Thai tea, Arnold Palmer. And, and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. um, my number one flavor is sweet corn. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to try that. That's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the crowd pleaser. Whenever I introduce that particular popsicle to anyone, it, it, uh, it, it, it blows you away. Because wow. you, you would never, you would never like, what? Sweet corn? Ice cream? Popsicle? But once <laughs> you have it, it's delicious. It's, it's, it's nice. Yeah. So now that you, you know, you're a connector and you know, you, you have a business, I want to ask, um, one, one question. And the question is, is the connection part, you know, do you know people in the industry? Do you know vendors, you know, like, like, you know, how many people do you work with to connect, you know, every day? Well, just in general, you know what I mean? Like, you're as a connector, who is your crowd? For my networking company or for my podcast? Yes, for your networking um, company. The networking company um, is just, it's a, it's a certain kind of, it's a certain individual that knows the power of connection. Mm -hmm. That's who it's for. He okay. or she knows the power of connection. She under, he or she understands that. Yes. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a business owner. It could be a restaurant a owner. It could be, could it be like no, a it church? Could be, it could be a church. It could, he or she could be a teacher. Mm, so okay, I have teachers awesome. that come. Yes. Yeah. It's for anybody. It's for anybody that understands, you know, the power of connection, the power of networking. Because yes. everybody, we all need each other. Yes, that is true. Yeah. As a nonprofit, yeah you know, mentality, I think about a directory, you know, um, where we need a directory and the, the individuals that you connect with, it would be awesome to, to know who you connect with. Like, for example, when I used to work in the Inglewood, uh, community as a gang interventionist, 
that was like directory. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is a directory? You know, but I just remember yeah. hearing that word directory. And so I start reaching out to the churches. So I had the directory for churches, whether it was a Christian church, non-denominational Catholic church. Right. And then I had the directory for businesses, then the CBOs, which is our community-based organizations, nonprofits. Right. And then, um, also law enforcement and, uh, small businesses as well, because they get overlooked a lot. You know, they get overlooked, whether it's a tattoo shop or an ice cream mom and pop shop, you know, and things right. of that nature. So do, do you plan to create a directory? Um, people have asked me. Mm -hmm. I, I've thought about it, but um, I haven't structured it. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, I have it. Um, the way I've, I've been doing it is just me my, by myself. People call me and they'll ask, Hey, do you know anybody in this sector? And then I'll connect. And, and that's, that's the way I've been doing it now. But that's, that's good though. That's good. Mm -hmm. I can't wait till one day when you do that directory, cause it, it'll be very informative for a lot of people like myself. Like, you know, um, I do life insurance. I've been doing life insurance to educate our black and brown communities. Cause I know Merrill Lynch or Charles Schwab is not going to knock on our community doors, but I will, you know, right. um, I own a nonprofit. Why? Because I want to give back to my community where I was born and raised. And I know nonprofits helped me when I was younger as an at-risk youth. And then mm -hmm. um, I have a trucking company and I have the connection to those individuals that helped me and my husband out, right? So they might be mm -hmm. people that wanna have, a, start a trucking company. And I wanna be able to give those resources out as well. And then I have an online clothing store that I need help with because I'm not sure how to make it pop, you know, how to bring people to the website. So then these mothers, you know, when it comes to Christmas or birthday parties, they can shop for themselves and then they can shop for their children. So, and then mm -hmm. plus last but not least, I'm running for mayor of Inglewood this year. Mm -hmm. So it's like the resources is just so phenomenal. So I'm just really excited that, um, that you're a connector and obviously God doesn't make mistakes because I'm gonna need your resources. And um, so how can our viewers uh, find you on social media? So my handcrafted popsicle company, uh, the name is Joy on a Stick. And you can find me website, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter at Joy on a Stick. Awesome. So and then what about my, your business? So for Latinx Network, website is latinxnetworkgroup.com. And all the social media handles are, is just Latinx Network. Oh, thank you. Before we end the show, is there something that you want to share with the viewers? Something positive, something motivating, you know? Something positive and motivating? Um, for me, positive and motivating, don't ever give up on your dreams. That's right. Don't ever, don't ever, whatever you have in your heart, whatever you're feeling, don't get it. Don't let anybody like, knock it out of your hands or... or or try to, you know, roadblock you. <laughs> yeah, etc. Like, grab that, cherish it, and carry it with you. Don't ever let anybody, anything, stop you from what you really want. Because I, I'm, I don't know. I'm living it now. I'm slowly living my dream. This is exactly yes. what I've wanted. Here it is. Um, every day it's only getting better and I'm living, awesome. I'm living exactly how I want, what I want. And, and because I never let it go, I, I didn't let it go. So don't whatever. Yeah. Don't ever let go of your dreams, whatever it is, fight for it. That's right. Oh my yeah. goodness. Thank you, Rudy. That's powerful. You know why? Because um, a lot of people, they get sidetracked with visions and goals. And if you never give up, you can get to your destination. And at least you could say yeah. you tried, you know, and you keep trying and trying until you just break that wall and get what you need in life. So you, yeah. you had an epiphany in China and bam, here you go. You know, like, man, yeah. like and Latin it, and X it, Network. And it wasn't, and it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Yes. It almost, almost slipped out of my hands. 
wow. almost. And yeah, I had a breaking point and it was this vision, which is my dream, my passion, mm -hmm. and then work at the time and other businesses and life and this and that. And it was just like, it, it felt, it felt like I'm, I'm, I'm walking uphill mm -hmm. and this thunderstorm is just like, wow, just hitting me. And, and like, Hey dude, you're not going anywhere. Thunderstorm, <laughs> crazy winds, and then a uh, jaguar, or I'm sorry, a cougar is in front of me. Like, <laughs> I'm like, really? I'm like, you're so really doing this? Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm going up there. Like, why are you doing this to me? Only he knows why. But yes. it was, it was, it, it, I mean, it was a great, crazy, crazy, crazy uh, time. It almost slipped out of my hands. I, wow. oh, I almost gave it up. Almost. But I, I'm like, no, I'm not. This is too big. I'm never going to, I'm not going to let this go. Yes. And thunderstorms, rain, uphill, cold, cougar, <laughs> name it. I'm just, these are, I'm not, you know, that's, those were not the absolute, but I'm yes. saying like, that's how it life felt. Was, mm -hmm. That's how it felt. Life yes. was just like, hitting boom, you left boom, and right. Boom, boom, boom. Left and right, boom, boom, I'm like, why, why? I don't know, but just keep on going. Keep on going, don't give it up, and yeah. Thank you so much, Rudy. Yeah. This is Raina Carrillo with Purpose and Passion. I was definitely inspired by the, the, the China story and the connection, and Rudy just, just having the, the thought to say, I need to do this, in the connector, you know, industry. So I'm really excited. So thank you so much for viewing our show today. Thanks, Lux Media Studio. Until then, have a blessed day. Bye. Bye, guys. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.